Hello everyone, in this video lecture series, I am going to talk about model organisms used in genetics that is Drosophila melanogaster, zebrafish and Cenorhabditis elegans. These are the three most common and preferred organisms used in different genetic experiments as models. Apart from genetics, they are also used in other fields of research as well. This video series is an outcome of an hands-on workshop come training program that was held in Dolasam College, University of Delhi in association with Sanskriti Foundation under IQAC on 28 to 31st May 2019. My first part of this video lecture deals with Drosophila melanogaster as the model organism, its basic introduction, morphology, life cycle, special features, of polyteen chromosome and different types of mutants found. As we all know that Drosophila genome shares a major part of it with human genome, many neurodegenerative diseases and neuropharmacological research are currently under study. So to start with Drosophila melanogaster. Why this organism is used as a model organism. After seeing this video lecture, I am sure we'll come to know about the important features that make Drosophila melanogaster a good experimental model system in genetics and also know the applications of this model organism. So, to start with, within a few years of the rediscovery of Mendel's rules in 1900, Drosophila melanogaster, the so-called fruit fly, became a favorite model organism for genetics research. So, Drosophila melanogaster is a small fly, also known as fruit flies or pomis flies or vinegar flies or wine flies. These common name of this organism is due to their occurrence over the overripe and rotten fruits. These organisms belong to the family Drosophilidae, which includes over 4,000 different species, but out of all, one of the species of this genus is intensely, intensely researched in the field of genetics, physiology, and developmental biology. It is Drosophila melanogaster, a very common model organism, and hence the term fruit fly or simply Drosophila is often denoted for Drosophila melanogaster. As you can see here, a picture of this organism which mostly resides on banana. So, coming over to the significance of this organism, what is the special characters this organism possess that makes it a wonderful model organism for genetic studies? These flies are small and easily reared in the laboratory. They have a short life cycle. A new generation of adult flies can be produced every, every two weeks. Females are fecund, that is, a female may lay hundreds of fertilized eggs during her brief lifespan. The resulting large populations make statistical analysis easy and reliable. These organisms have the giant or polyteen chromosomes in the salivary gland and other glands of the mature larva. These chromosomes show far more structural detail than do normal chromosomes and they are present during interphase when chromosomes are normally invisible. More recently, Drosophila has proven in other ways to have been a happy choice. Its embryo grows outside the body and can easily be studied at every stage of development. The blastoderm stage of the embryo is a synthesium that is thousands of nuclei confined by a single membrane. So that, for example, macromolecules like DNA injected into the embryo have easy access to all the nuclei. The genome is relatively small for an animal, less than a tenth that of humans and mice, and mutations can be targeted to specific genes. So coming over to the morphology of Drosophila melanogaster, the body of this organism is divided into head, thorax and abdomen with a pair of wings and haltiers. Wild type fruit flies are typically small, 2 to 4 mm, pale yellow to reddish brown with brick red eye and transverse black rings across the abdomen. These organisms 
exhibit sexual dimorphism that is the male and female can be distinguished the males being shorter in size than the female other characteristic distinguishable feature among the two are a sex comb on the tarsus of the first leg of the male fly short and blunt abdomen in males in comparison to large and pointed in females the abdomen of males also bear a distinct black patch and a genital apparatus on the ventral surface coming over to the life cycle of drosophila melanogaster average life span of drosophila melanogaster is about 30 days with optimum temperature at 29 degrees celsius although it may vary with temperature fertilization is internal eggs are white in color oval and bear two respiratory filaments that protrude out in the air as the eggs are buried inside the fruit and this solves the purpose of gas exchange in the eggs since drosophila is a holo metabolous insect that has a three larval stage and a pupal stage before the adult fly develops after the egg is fertilized The zygote undergoes several round of nuclear division without cytoplasmic division leading to formation of syncytial blastoderm later at about 10th division these nuclei migrate to the periphery of the zygote and form complete cells after blastulation and gastrulation eggs hatch in 22 to 24 hours to form the first insta larvae and the rest two larval stages follow After 30 hours the larva molds into a pupa the pupa is stationary as compared to actively feeding larval stages it undergoes metamorphosis into a adult fly called as imago the life cycle takes about 10 to 12 days this slide also shows the life cycle of drosophila melanogaster Most of the pictures used in this slide are original photographs that has been taken during the workshop by different participants of the workshop. As you can see here is the original picture of the egg how it looks under a microscope or through naked eyes. You can see two respiratory filaments very clearly here. Then these eggs hatch into the lar different larval stages. The different larval stages had has to form the pupa and pupa metamorphoses to form the adult forms now coming over to how these organisms are cultured in laboratory Dros drosophila culturing is cheap safe and easy procedure each female can lay up to 100 eggs per day that is 20000 per female thus large number can help in studying mutated progeny Lab flies are cultured in glass bottles or vials plugged with cotton wool to prevent escaping of flies and maintain sterile environment. The basic recipe for its food comprises of water, corn meal, yeast, soya flour, malt extract, corn syrup, and agar. Drosophila can be safely anesthetized in carbon dioxide or ether for studying the mutant phenotypes or setting up genetic crosses. Typically, stocks of flies are kept at 18 degrees Celsius as this slows the life cycle down to approximately 28 days. This diagram shows the different levels of culturing of Drosophila melanogaster how it starts with the day 1 and then it ends at day 28 one of the most interesting factor which make drosophila the model organism is the genome of this organism is readily available the complete genome sequence of drosophila melanogaster was obtained in the year 2000 that revealed the estimated size of the genome to be 139.5 million bases with 15682 genes and it comprised of four pairs of chromosomes the first pair of chromosomes are called sex chromosomes that can be xx or xy and the other three pair of chromosomes are the autosomal pair as we all know sex in drosophila is determined by the ratio of x chromosome to autosomes while y has no input in determining the sex this diagram shows 
the chromosomes of Drosophila melanogaster. The data has been taken from National Center for Biotechnology Information, that is NCBI. The four pair of chromosomes indicate the base pair with map distance, that is centimorgan. The position of the centromere in each type of chromosome is also represented. The most talked about feature of Drosophila is the presence of polyteen chromosomes. So what are these polyteen chromosomes and what is the function of these polyteen chromosomes? The most thoroughly studied example of polyteen chromosomes are the giant chromosomes find, found in certain cells of larval flies. This photomicrograph shows the polyteen chromosome in salivary gland cell of Drosophila melanogaster larva. Such chromosomes are found in other larva active cells as well. Each of Drosophila's four pairs of chromosome has undergone 10 rounds of DNA replication. The maternal and paternal homologs as well as all their duplicates are aligned in exact register with each other. So each chromosome consists of a cable containing 2048 identical strands of DNA. They are so large that they can be seen during interface even with a low power light microscope. So what is the function of these polyteen chromosome? Probably gene amplification. Having multiple copies of genes permit a high level of gene expression that is abundant transcription and translation to produce the gene products. This would account for polyteny being associated with large metabolically active cells like salivary glands. Polyteen chromosomes are subdivided into some 5000 dense bands separated by light interbands. The bands are further subdivided into dark bands of heterochromatin where the DNA is tightly compacted and there is little gene transcription and gray bands of euchromatin where the DNA is more loosely compacted and there is active gene transcription. The interbands contain regulatory elements, promoter and enhancer that control the genes in the adjacent gray bands. Here in this picture, it shows puffs that are present on polyteen chromosomes. Polyteen chromosomes also have regions called puffs that are swollen and appear to have a looser structure. The exact pattern of puffs differ in different type of cells, that is salivary glands versus gut with changing conditions in one type of cell. For example, giving the molting hormone ecdyson to an insect cause a predictable change in the puffing pattern. This is just what one would predict if the puffs were represented regions of intense gene transcription. The pattern of puffing within a cell varies over time. For example, each time an insect larva prepare to molt, a definite predictable sequence of puffing occurs. These eight photomicrographs show the change in puffing patterns of equivalent segments of chromosome 3 in Drosophila melanogaster over the course of some 20 hours of normal development. Note that during this period when the larva were preparing to pupate, certain puffs formed, regressed and formed again. However, the order in which they did often differed. For example, in the larva, band 62E becomes active before 63E. C, D, and E. But when pupation begins, the reverse is true. In general, early puffs reflect the activation of genes encoding transcription factor. These proteins then bind to the promoters of other genes, turning them on and causing a puff to appear at their loci. These slides represent different types of mutants of Drosophila melan melanogaster that we generally see in laboratories. The first picture shows the wild type which has a brick red eye, normal bristles and normal wings. The mutant 1 is white eyed mutant with normal wings. Mutant 2 is a white eye mutant with curly wings. As you can see the pointer is marked to the curly wings. The third mutant shows ebony body color that is the color of the body is black. Mutant 4 so shows the eye color of these organisms are orange as compared to red and they are underdeveloped. This last picture shows a combination of different mutants in their eye color. All these pictures are the original photographs clicked during the workshop. 
So this was all about the basics of Drosophila melanogaster as model organism. Thank you.